Dive into the fun world of letters with Sparkle DNA's ABC Word Chase and Coloring Book. Looking for an exciting and educational way to help your little ones explore their ABCs? Look no further. This engaging book not only allows your child to practice tracing the alphabet, but also includes tracing words and coloring fun pictures in between. It's kid-friendly, kid-approved, and the perfect blend of learning and creativity. Get your copy today and watch your child's learning journey light up with joy. Hey, and welcome back to the LifeScope channel. On your way in, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Support the channel as always. It is greatly appreciated. So I wanted to do the continuation video from talking about the lawyer Mark Agnifilo. Now, it's not so much about him, but more so about how Diddy's lawyer is appearing per se, and then the difference between how he is showing up and in terms of this new lawyer that's on the scene is showing up. So in the last video, I discussed how Mark Agnifilo, he appears to be missing that key factor when you are representing a high profile case or just a client in general. He just seems like someone that's not necessarily believable as an attorney and I know maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense because they're just doing their jobs but again I'm just going to repeat from the last video I feel like an attorney should have the knowledge of the law and should be able to know the loophole so that they can get their client out of sticky situations and then have the confidence or have the charismatic ability to back it all up in terms of their presentation and the presentation is from the top of your head all the way to the sole of your feet it's in terms of how you're looking how you're sounding how you're making eye contact and all of that because we are dealing with the court of public opinion we're going to look at somebody and we are going to obviously look at how they present themselves how they're talking what they're saying and we're taking it all in and then we're making a determination of whether or not we feel like this person is full of you know what so i want to get into this video because this is supposed to have new information new alleged victims have come forward so let's talk as we always do i've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media and when i agreed to pursue this i expected as much this isn't my first rodeo but victims who step forward to have their voices heard should not be subjected to that kind of conduct they should not be targeted. I want to say this and I want to be clear about it. Although we are vetting each call as stringently as we can, I always start with a mindset that I believe victims. I believe victims because I understand the tremendous courage it takes to step forward. So if you're watching this, please hear me. If you're out there and you have been victimized, you are not alone. There is a great strength in numbers. You can seek redress. You can obtain justice. We can help you and we will help you. Okay, so let me just pause right there. So within the first 59, 60 seconds, to me, this attorney appears to be confident. He appears to be um, I'm going to even say believable, and that doesn't mean that he's telling the truth, but just appears to be believable to where you want to know what he's going to say next. And it's not because he's on the other side, but 
that's just how he appears within these first few seconds to be carrying himself now i do have to keep in mind that he is doing a press conference he has his words in front of him so it's one of those things where he is prepared and that's why he could be definitely coming off the way that he is but the difference between this attorney what he just said in the first few seconds how he's looking how he's talking and mark agnifilo what he said with the reporter although it's a little unfair because mark agnifilo wasn't doing a press conference and the reporter looked like they were coming up to him asking him a question but this is supposed to be off the top of his head without any paper in front of him or anything like that and he sound silly in the response that he gave and just giving unnecessary voluntary information like why would you want to deal with an attorney that's doing too much talking on your behalf when they don't have to so again that's just my opinion in terms of observing how he is moving and then looking at this new attorney so if i could find and i may try to find another video of mark agnifilo just to be a little fair in my assessment of him try to see if there's another video where he's actually doing some type of press conference to really compare him to this other attorney but let's listen a little more first and i'm gonna see if there's another video of mark agnifilo just to play uh maybe about 60 seconds of that to really compare them that being said as stated we are vetting every call that we receive we've had to turn away some for each, we ask for corroboration. For each, we ask for the identity of witnesses. We also have collected pictures, videos, texts. We check venues, we check dates. We want to corroborate that the claims being made have legitimacy and merit. We have on staff now a former detective from the Major Offenders Unit of Houston Police Department who is helping us vet each claim. We're using our common sense. We're being stringent because as I said, these are not easy cases. They're very tough. The process is hard. And in some cases, the process is very lengthy. So let me just pause right there. Um, because although we can assume that that's what all of the attorneys do they have their research team and they go over every claim that's being filed to back up to make sure that they are putting their name behind and in front of the victims who are being truthful and they have proof so i guess i appreciate that he is putting that out there but that is something that I would assume that all of them are doing. They're just not taking on clients that's just saying, hey, this is what Diddy did, uh, allegedly, and there's just absolutely no proof. That's just like the video where one of the victims said that they were pregnant and then had actually a miscarriage, but was harassed by young miami allegedly to get an abortion like where is the proof that you were actually pregnant or is this just a claim that's being made although plausible like i said before the scenarios um where she could have had a miscarriage before actually going to the doctor or went to the doctor had a miscarriage or what have you there are plausible scenarios but still there should be some paperwork that traces back that saying maybe that she did get to see a doctor before after or, or whatnot to prove that 
what she said is somewhat credible so i like that he's just telling people that this attorney but is that something that's really new that's something they probably always do okay so i did kind of just key in mark agnifolo to look up a video where he appears to be doing maybe some type of press conference where he is better prepared so i've never seen this video i want to just give a comparison between him and the newer attorney to see whether or not there is a difference or if i'm just looking in too deep but the reason why i'm going over this because just think about it this is how you could i guess use discernment in a way to be able to see yeah that person is full of this yeah i don't know if i want to deal with that person they doing that you know so that's what this is for me this is when i look at something or i'm going over something i just try to really weigh in and use common sense and see what's going on does it work all the time no but it does work enough times to where i personally keep doing that with just uh people in general or just when somebody's trying to give me information that i'm taking in basically don't just allow anybody to tell you anything and you don't question it regardless of who they are so let's check out this video of mark agnifolo and see if he sounds a little less silly than the last video. Um, I spent I spent the, the evening with him. I was with him until about one o'clock. His spirits are good. He's confident. Um, he is dealing with this head on the way he's dealt with every challenge in his life. And um, he's he's not guilty. He's innocent of these charges. Uh, we know we know what the charges are going to be without seeing the indictment. It's going to be racketeering. It's going to be sex trafficking. It's going to be things along those lines. Uh, this is what we've been expecting since the search is in March. He, he, to his great credit, he voluntarily came to New York. Not a lot of defendants do that. Um, he came to New York to, to, to basically engage the court system and start the case. And it'll start today. And okay, so that was Mark Agnifolo being, I guess, to me, maybe a little more professional. What do you think? Do you think he still is or isn't a good representation of Diddy? And I still want to know, did he fire him or what? We do know he has two new attorneys on deck to um, maybe take a little bit of the forefront, but would Mark Agnifolo still be there just not doing news conferences or press conferences or things like that so definitely let me know what you think but i'm gonna go ahead and get back to the video that we're watching and talking about the new victims that are coming forward these cases are hard to prove many times it's the victim's word against the alleged perpetrator each of these victims will no doubt be publicly attacked by the alleged perpetrators, and in some cases, the general public. The feckless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. We did not enter this fray blindly. I wish it was my last such fray. I wish this type of hate behavior wasn't so pervasive, but it is what it is, so we will press on. So right there, yeah, I mean, people are going to have their say regardless in this Diddy case because we are all just hanging around seeing what's going to unfold. All of the stuff that we've heard people like Jaguar Wright has been saying, like Gene Deal has been saying, and people try to brush them off. Um, and call them all kinds of names and, and say they disgruntled like all of those things and then even um, some of the victims who have come forward so so far people will attack them so that is a lot to take on 
I would assume that's a lot to take on mentally and maybe could negatively have an effect on a person physically. So, yeah, they know what they're getting into him and his uh, team. So, I guess at this point, maybe they're trying to go every, go over everything with a fine tooth comb so they could just stand on the evidence when it is presented. Because I am interested in knowing what pictures, what video, because he said pictures and video that they got or have seen or clips of or whatnot. So what pictures, what video, um, like everyone else, I want to see. If it's something really disgusting, I don't want to see. But just maybe the beginning and some kind of just fade out or whatever of certain situations where things are being set up and they're just going over it for us to really see because nobody's trying to be a part of seeing someone get abused like I'm not trying to really watch that but just enough for us to get the idea of what is going on as I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. You should know, in this group, it is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identify as African American, 30% are white, and the remainder are Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. I don't want to focus on the ages of these victims. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. Now, although most of the victims who have stepped forward were victimized after 2015, this has been going on for a very long time. Now, when you think about the fact that some of this conduct occurred 25 years ago, and you wonder why would it take somebody so long to step forward, I want to remind you that, that many states in the United States have recognized that it's very difficult for a victim to step forward and to make these types of allegations when something very terrible has happened to them. I'll use and I have been saying that for the longest in a number of videos. It is not that easy for victims to come forward and I'm not trying to use that as an excuse for them, but it's not. If you guys have ever talked to people who have been a victim of something, you see sometimes how you may encourage them to do one thing, like maybe you should tell somebody, maybe you should talk with someone and they may brush it off. They may even get mad at you for suggesting that they talk to someone. So it's definitely, definitely not always easy for a victim to come forward. And my saying is they got to just do that on their own time. Don't push them out. 
don't don't try to make them feel bad for not doing it don't put the consequences of something could happen to someone else because they didn't come forward don't put that on them it's really unfair because we don't know what they're dealing with mentally so it's so unfair to put that on them things will happen regardless maybe if they did or didn't tell would a person get caught up with if they did possibly but that still shouldn't be put on any victim they don't have to carry that when they go to bed at night oh because I didn't step forward sooner this person may still be blank 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 we we don't know that so it's real unfair to do victims that way Use New York, the state of New York as an example. The state of New York has specific statutes in place that revive claims that are even claims that would typically be not able to be brought, that it revives such claims and they can be brought even 25 to 30 years later. Because there's a recognition there in New York and California and other states that, that it's very difficult for a victim to come forward. And I would, I would respectfully suggest the only reason many of these people are coming forward because they see other victims coming forward. And it gives them some comfort that, hey, I won't be the only one. And I expect more victims will come forward. You know, there's an old saying that says, a lie has great speed, but truth has endurance. The acts complained of in these cases that we're going to file occurred primarily in New York, either Manhattan or the Hamptons, or occurred in California, primarily in Los Angeles, or in Florida, primarily in Miami. Most of these events and incidents occurred at parties, typically after parties, or album release parties, New Year's Eve parties, Fourth of July parties, something they called a puppy party, the all white party. Although several of these events occurred at auditions. Uh, many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry were, were coerced into this type of conduct. Uh, in the promise of being made a star or in the promise of, of having um, Sean Combs listen to their tape or even let them read for Sean Combs. You should know that some of this behavior occurred at well-known venues in New York City. Some of this behavior occurred at private residences of people that we all know. Some of this behavior occurred at hotels that we're all familiar with. You should know that more than 55% of the victims filed reports, reported this conduct to either the authorities, that is the police, or to hospitals. We're in the process of collecting with our team assistance, uh, medical records, uh, reports that were made to the authorities. And I've already said that some of the individuals in this group did in fact talk to the FBI. You should know that, that several of the individuals, and when I say several, I mean many, uh, who did in fact seek medical treatment were drug tested and drugs were found in their system, weird drugs, drugs that you probably never heard of. One in particular that, that continues to pop up is a drug called xylazine or Trank, which based on uh, our research is known as a horse tranquilizer. Wait a minute. Let me pause right on that. So he said the train. Now I did a video, which I am going to link this um, up at the top that talks about train. And I believe this is showing the homeless population in Philadelphia and it was supposed to be Trank is supposed to be a split between horse tranquilizer and fentanyl so maybe Diddy only just allegedly used horse tranquilizer but in that video um, and that was some time ago about the Trank just looking at those people's people it is highly a addictive it's addictive it erodes people's skin like people's skin becomes 
very flesh eating and they're on the street i mean it's just like real live zombies so to have someone give victims that type of drug and they never really did get into all of the drugs that was used yet so now we are going into that with the information coming out um i know we probably have heard about certain stuff that was used and we could all assume through social media but if drugs like that are being used how how sway how sway are you gonna tell victims well maybe you should have just walked away maybe you shouldn't have did this maybe you shouldn't did that they are giving drugs that will put a horse on their back you feel what i'm saying and you telling them hey well you know what it is or and i'm just talking about people in general that's just trying to find a way to i guess defend diddy in a in a sense trying to find a way to come up with excuses for him and as of right now this is all still allegedly until everything comes out but if they being slipped drugs that's effing up horses that will put a horse down what do you think is going to do with the average person so that is crazy that this attorney said the drug trank. So check that out, the drug trank. Now, there's been a lot of reports that we're filing a class action. This is not a class action. Class action is when one or two people file a case on behalf of a group of people. That's not this. These cases will be individual cases. Each case will live and die on its own merit. These cases will be filed individually, one plaintiff against whoever the defendants were involved in the case. Each case may be filed in one venue like California. Another case may be filed in New York. One case may sue just Sean Combs, but multiple other people. One case may sue a range of people. I would expect most, though, to be filed, as I said, in New York and Los Angeles. Now, I know this. Many of you came here thinking or hoping or perhaps uh, believing that I may start naming names. Well, that day will come but it won't be today. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um, it's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're gonna make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. As he should, make sure that you are right as best as you can before releasing those people's names because their names will forever be attached to Diddy and his debauchery. So to me, that's smart to not name names. Now, the nosiness of me would love to know those names to see if it is the names that people have been saying all along. But I'm sure the people that know what they have done that's in the entertainment business and everything, they are probably sweating. They are probably nervous as hell if they see that Diddy done got caught up with and they know that there's tapes and evidence and things that could lead back to them they are probably sweating and i'm wondering if a lot of people are going to buy their time meaning they're going to just start doing some things that they don't normally do or that we don't see them do these entertainers just getting into stuff where it just looks like they possibly live in their best life because basically they're counting down the days until it's their time so it's going to be really crazy to see how certain entertainers and celebrities act so this video is 30 minutes long and we've only gotten into about eight minutes and 42 seconds so i 
don't know if I want to play the whole video. Let's see. Let's see where the attorney takes us and what other information he is going to put out there. Uh, but the names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. Mm. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly, but complicit bystanders. That is those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. I call them the facilitators of foul play. Hey. Who do y'all think it is? He's talking about collaborators, people being complicit, people who just wanted to enjoy the freak off show. Who do you think it is? Leave your comments down below. And he said that they already know. So I'm, I'm wondering how... Has some people reached out to him? Willing participants in vile conduct. As we identify them, each will be part of this case as defendants. These defendants will not only include individuals, but will also include corporate entities who ultimately profited off of this culture and behavior. I'm looking at banks, pharmaceutical companies, hotels. We know that many of these individuals were paid cash. We know that, that many of these individuals involved, whether they were the ones being assaulted and abused or they're witnessing other people being assaulted and abused and then paid and threatened and told to leave. Typically paid 10 grand in cash and told to leave. And then threatened as they were leaving. So in addition to Sean Combs, you should know the defendants in these cases we're gonna file will include anyone of course who engaged in the assault or exploitation anyone who participated in such in any way, anyone who encouraged or facilitated this conduct, anyone who was in the room and watched it happen, but made no effort to stop it, any venue or venue owner who was aware of what was going on, but failed to stop it, any individual or entity who knew about the conduct and benefited from it, but did nothing to report it or stop it, and any individual or entity who covered it up or helped cover it up. These people who know who they are should just come forward now. I would imagine as we speak here, there are a myriad of people who are very nervous. You can't hide skeletons in the closet forever. I would expect there are many people out there right now who are, who are desperately searching their memories as they delete their texts and data. Uh let's pause right there see i didn't want to play all of this uh video but the lawyer is cooking a little bit he is saying you cannot hide them skeletons and that is so true whatever you do in the dark baby will come to the light so you have to be very careful how you are moving try not to screw over your people try not to do that so he's talking about venues he's going he's going very big with all of these lawsuits and this is going to be a long drawn out case let's listen to a little more of what the attorney is talking about now although these are in fact, individual cases, there is a common theme, an MO, if you will. Typically, the victim is lured into a situation where he or she is given a drink. Typically, that drink uh, reported by these victims is apparently laced with something. Once that drink takes effect, the perpetrators perform all kinds of sexual acts on the victims, many times passing him or her around as other people watch and enjoy the show and then leave the victim ashamed, confused, injured, and wondering what happened. 
When the victim reaches out, he or she is told not to say anything. Sometimes there are threats of physical violence or financial repercussions or bodily harm. The claims we intend to bring will include the following, violent sexual assault or rape, sexual abuse, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, false imprisonment, compelling prostitution, sexual misconduct, dissemination of video recordings, false imprisonment, sexual abuse of minors. Given the large volume of cases and given our other docket obligations, and given the fact that we want to be sure when we file these cases that they are fully vetted, I expect we'll start filing these cases against Sean Combs and other perpetrators within the next 30 days. Now, it's rare, you know, sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, uh, these types of, this type of activity is pervasive in our society and it's rare we get a chance where, where uh, we can really focus on this as a country and really focus on this about how pervasive this is and what we can, as collectively can do about it. So. I thought I'd take this opportunity before I go into some of the individual cases and talk about some of the individual claims being made and some of the, so you'll get a, get a sense of what this 120 people group looks like individually. I want to bring forward. Um, okay, so I think I am going to go ahead and stop this particular video right there. That's a good 14 minutes in and just kind of taking the information that's already been stated i mean he is putting it all out there he really is putting the information out there and so far we really won't start knowing what's going on until maybe towards the end of the year with the other people but things are going to be filed within 30 days so let me know what you think first question do you think this attorney is a little more presentable or appear to be more credible than mark agnifilo and i'm only going on in terms of how they're both moving so far in defending their clients like who would you believe from what you have heard so far it's no secret that i'm leaning a little towards what busby and his team got going on just because he's trying to at least appear to be shooting it straight and saying what it is and putting it out there and just giving the people the information on how he is moving so definitely let me know what you think don't forget to like share subscribe support the channel and until next time bye